Mga kababayan, today is a very inspiring and worthwhile show as I will be reading excerpts of a book entitled In the Country. Recently released nationwide and already has been getting great reviews. Best of all, the author is Filipina American. Mia Alvar is a fiction writer living in New York City. Her first book in the country is a collection of short stories recently named an Amazon Best Book of the Month, a Barnes & Noble Discover Great New Writers selection, a New York Times Book Review Editor Choice, and a San Francisco Chronicle recommended book. She was born in the Philippines raised in Bahrain and the United States. Mia also graduated from Harvard College and the School of Arts at Columbia University. In the Country was published by Alfred A. Knopf on June 16, 2015 to wide critical acclaim. The New York Times Book Review called her a writer with enchanting powers. While on NPR, Maureen Corrigan praised In the Country's gorgeous writing style from the kind of writer whose imagination seems inexhaustible and who stirs up an answering desire in her readers for more and more stories. According to Alvar's publisher, these nine globe-trotting, unforgettable stories from Mia Alvar vividly gives voice to the women and men of the Filipino diaspora. Here are exiles, emigrants, and wanderers uprooting their families from the Philippines to begin new lives in the Middle East, the United States, and elsewhere, sometimes turning back again. So, uh, for example, there is a story about a pharmacist living in New York who smuggles drugs to his ailing father in Manila only to discover alarming truths about his family and his past. In Bahrain, a Filipina teacher drawn to a special pupil finds, to her surprise, that she is questioning her own marriage. And a college student leans on her brother, a laborer in Saudi Arabia, to support her writing ambitions without realizing that his life truly is made for fiction. And in the title story, a journalist and a nurse face an unspeakable trauma amidst the political turmoil of the Philippines in the 1970s and 80s. So In the Country speaks to the heart of everyone who has ever searched for a place to call home. Alvar's powerful debut collection explores the universal experiences of loss, displacement, and the longing to connect across borders, both real and imagined. Deeply compassionate and richly felt, In the Country marks the emergence of a formidable new writer. And of course, sinabi ko nga kanina, pinay po siya. So with me, Alvar's permission, we are doing an exclusive excerpt reading of her work today, starting off with the story entitled Contra Vida on page three. Here we go. My mother was waiting in front of her house when I rode up in a taxi. There you are, she said, as if we'd simply lost each other for an hour or two at a party. I only half embraced her, afraid she might break if I held too tight. She hadn't been able to collect me from the airport herself. Years ago, my father had forbidden her to drive, though I suppose he could do little to prevent it now. Let me, she said, reaching for my suitcase. I waved her away. I would no sooner allow my mother to carry my suitcase than allow her to carry me. Oh, Steve, she protested, you don't know my strength. She dropped her arms, flattening the palms against her lap, a habit I remembered well. Throughout my childhood, she only looked to be drying her hands on an apron, whether or not she was wearing one. In the decades since I left, she had aged, exactly. To my eyes, she seemed not older, but more. More frail, more tired, softer spoken. Her dark teaspoon-shaped face cast farther down. Every feature I remembered had settled in her and been more deeply confirmed. My parents still live in Mabini Heights, a suburb of Manila, and monument to a time when they belonged to the middle class. My father had called himself an import-export businessman before sliding through the years down a spiral of unrelated jobs, each more menial than the last and harder for him to keep. And my mother had been a nurse before he had banned her from working outside the house altogether. But... If they'd come into the world, so had Mabini Heights. Ever since my childhood in the 70s, when so much of the middle class fled Marcos and martial law, houses had been left unfinished or carved up for different uses. Squatters set up camp amid the scaffolding and roofless rooms. Families took in boarders or relatives. Our house had changed too. 
On its right, a gray, unpainted cinder block cell had been added, taking up what used to be a yard. My parents had cemented over the grass and built this Sari Sari store five years earlier, selling snacks and other ends, odds and ends through a sliding wicket to people on the street. The Sari Sari comprised what I imagine was a dream of my parents who grew up poor, a green buffer between the world and their world. There is an excerpt reading of Into the Country. I highly suggest you grab a copy. You're in for a treat dahil pagbalik natin dito sa Kababayan today, makakausap po natin ang nagsulat po nito na si Mia Alvar from New York City. You won't want to miss this here on Kababayan today. We'll be right back.